Hi everyone, I'm Yi Fang from the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. Today I will share our data art related to the Book of Songs. Let's first look at the background. The Book of Songs consists of 305 poems. It is officially assembled by the famous founder of Confucius, Confucius, who lived in the late Zhou Dynasty about 3,000 years ago in China. The poems cover many themes to portray the whole society in the late Zhou Dynasty, including not only ballads and folk customs of ordinary people, but also sacrifice and the banquet of nobility. This epoch is paralleled with the exile period of the world history, and Confucius is regarded as one of the fundamental East Asia philosophers. It is widely acknowledged as the origin of traditional Chinese culture and highly impacted the whole East Asia. Although many phenomena mentioned are antiquated to Chinese people today, many language styles and underlying thoughts are almost the same as those we are experiencing nowadays, especially the euphemistic style lying in Chinese culture. Euphemism usually uses plants and animals as metaphors to express the feelings of the authors. For example, in the poem Chasing the Phantom, the reed is used to express the loneliness of the author when he is missing his yearning girl. So we would like to state that the frequently applied imaginaries act like a bridge connecting the abject themes and subjective emotions. Also from a macro level, the Book of Songs established a time tunnel connecting people today and in their senses to help us understand the everlasting political human lives. Then we will introduce the workflow and our visual designs. We have used two types of data, Chinese and English versions of the poems and the paintings of plants and animals drawn by Hou Siyi in the Qing Dynasty. Based on the raw data, we want to distill several dimensions to describe the whole collection. So we first manually label these dimensions of all the poems. We also cross-validate the labels with several authoritative studies. Then we programmed to obtain statistics of the dimensions and the relationships among different imaginaries. We further designed the visual representations, and here is our pictorial for the Book of Songs. It consists of three parts, a flow overview, six glyphs to summarize the top frequently appeared imaginaries, and a set of legends and introductions. Our overview summarizes all the poems in the Book of Songs. We apply a Sankey diagram to form into a shape of Chinese arc bridge. From left to right, the node groups represent different dimensions we summarized as mentioned before. We use different colors to represent different dimensions. The first node group is genre. We use the sunburst graph in the right half circle to show the detailed classification in songs odds and epics and hymns. For example, the inner circular ring represents different sections. We use opacity and arc lengths to double encode the number of poems in these sections. The outer ring means for poems within each section, how many categories of subsections exist. The height of the flow between genre and function encodes the number of poems belonging to both categories. Other flows also follow the similar encoding showing the number of poems between functions and topics, emotions, and the rhetorics. For the imaginary, we partition it into plants and animals. The word size encodes the number of poems each imaginary exists. In the inner donut chart, we use arc lengths to encode the number of poems in each imaginary category. To emphasize the importance of imaginaries, we distill the six top frequently appeared imaginaries in each category to show the poem statistics. At first, we got inspiration from the traditional Coxcomb diagram. It is a bar chart in the polar coordinate. We conducted several improvements on the traditional design. For each imaginary, we first distill all the poems that mention it. 
Then we summarize the proportion of the poems in each emotions. For poems in each emotion category, we compute the proportion of topics. Then we form into four levels of hierarchy to show the summary of all the poems that involve this imaginary. Then we distributed it along the polar system. We use the radius lens, opacity, and arc lens to triple encode the number of poems to magnify the differences. We only make use of two-thirds of the whole circle to save space for other information. Next, we hollow out an inner circle to embed the image. We then distributed the sectors inside the circle so that we can make all the imaginary glyphs at the same size, which is more neat. Finally, to show the relation of the imaginary with others, we use the left one-third arc to add other imaginary that appear concurrently in the same poems. The size of the image encodes the number of poems that appear together. We also want to share some interesting findings based on our pictorial. The songs is the genre with most poems that records stories among plebeians. This may be because the colorful life of them gives birth to a large number of ballads. Those poems usually started with natural environments or animals to express people's feelings. Such a unique style is the reason why a lot of poems in the songs flow to the inspiration function. From the world cloud, we can see that the most frequently used animal imaginary is the horse. Keeping the horse in captivity is a conventional practice in ancient China since the horse is an essential type of animals in scenarios like hunting and transportation. The mulberry is the most mentioned tree. The emotions of the poems involving the mulberry are diverse. It may be related to the Kandivanshan culture in the late Zhou dynasty, when the mulberry seemed to be everywhere. The grain is a type of tasty fruit, the leaf is a type of delicious food for the silk worm, and the trees are great raw materials for houses. So, people would always use this common type of tree as a metaphor to express their different feelings. We introduced our work to four groups of audiences and received valuable feedback. To conclude, we have contributed a pictorial summarizing the Book of Songs and its frequent imageries from different dimensions. In the future, we plan to improve it into an interactive web application and add more details. That's all. Thank you.